Welcome everyone to our March A to J Author new, new User Webinar. This is Jessica Frank, A to J Author's Project Manager. Today we're going to be talking about how to get the most out of your A to J guided interviews. I've divided today's webinar into four main sections. So these are the tools or components of A to J Author that are less widely known, but can make a big impact on your user's experience, on your own authoring experience, and uh, for getting the credit for the hard work that you've put into authoring. So first, we'll cover multimedia in our just-in-time learning features of Learn More and Pop-Ups. Then, how the merge tool can cut down on your authoring time. Third, we'll cover how reports can help you coordinate with subject matter experts and translators, and also how they can help you keep your interviews up to date each year. And then finally, we'll talk about how you can create custom segmented analytics reports to show your bosses or your funders to prove that people are using your interviews and to show the impact that uh, you have through document assembly on your target audience. So first let's talk about getting the most bang for your buck out of learn mores and pop-ups. But some basics first, if you're new to authoring an A to J author. Learn mores are one of A to J authors just in time learning features that allow authors to provide additional information just at the point in the interview in which the end user needs it. So you've asked them a question and you anticipate that the end user may have some difficulty answering it. You put that additional information in a learn more that's available to the end user if they need it. Most commonly, this is in the form of some additional text or perhaps a link to additional resources as shown here on the screenshot. Pop-ups are another just-in-time learning feature that allow you to add definitions when you just have to use the legal term. Sometimes there isn't a way to translate a question further into plain language and you have to use a legally relevant term. You or the form needs to know if the person is the petitioner or the respondent, but most users aren't going to know what those terms mean. So when that happens, you can add a definition for your end user to click on if they need it with a pop-up as here. So the word petitioner has a pop-up associated with it. It looks like a blue hyperlink. They click it and it explains that a petitioner is the person who starts a case. Generally, they file the original paperwork with the court that initiates the case or whatever definition you need. But these can be so much more than just plain text or links to additional information. As the saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. So help explain where information is with an image rather than just with a word. So for the example here, the question is asking what is the district court number for the court that the user is going to be filing their response in? The answer is easily found in the caption, but many users aren't going to know where to look for a caption on a legal document that they may have. So a picture of a sample document, so here is just a sample complaint for uh, divorce, um, with the caption highlighted or specifically pointing out like an arrow here what information you're looking for can make it so much easier for an end user to find the information they need right away without them having to dig through their paperwork or try and figure out this information on their own. The learn more and the pop-ups can be videos too. So if you have a short video explaining a legal concept or where to find the information that the question is asking, you can upload that to your interview as well. There um, are some great resources that were funded by the TIG program, the Technology Innovation Grant, um, to create explainer videos a couple of years ago. I think they're hosted through uh, LSNTAP. Um, if you're not familiar with LSNTAP or TIGS or what I'm talking about, feel free to email me later and I can help point you in the right direction. Um, but there are great explainer videos about legal concepts that can either be adapted to your specific state or used wholesale. Um, and those can be uploaded to your interview too. All of our multimedia components are WCAG 2.0 AA compliant. So WCAG is Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. 2.0 and AA are um, a standard level for how uh, content should be displayed on the internet for accessibility purposes. Um, so all of, all of these here shown in A to J Author are fields where you can add um, different things that make the interview more accessible to end, use, end users however they're approaching it. So if they're using a screen reader, um, if they're just looking at the screen, there's things like the media label where you can label anything you upload as supplemental or complementary. Let somebody know if they can skip it. If they've already read the content, do they actually have to watch the video too? Or does it add something to it? Um, there are alt tags for graphics. So short, think 100 characters, 
that explain what's in a picture. Whenever you upload a picture, um, you should include an alt tag because that is what is used by screen readers to explain what the picture is um, if someone cannot see it. And we have things like video transcripts, which allow you to add a video transcript to your um, to the Learn More or the pop-up whenever you include a video. So it doesn't auto generate the transcript. You will have to create that transcript for yourself. Um, but there are some tools like on YouTube or Camtasia for creating automatic transcripts that then can be edited um, if they're not correct. So all of these allow you to add multimedia to enhance your interview without leaving out a population of users who um, could benefit from it as well. So accessibility is always really important for us at A to J Author. So now that we talked about the user experience, let's talk about the authoring experience. The merge tool was created to make your authoring experience easier, easier. And we're all for usability, both for end users and authors. The first thing to talk about is the normal workflow for interview creation. So generally, you have a paper form that you want to automate, like the example on the far left. You highlight or you mark up all the fields that need to be answered by the end user. Then you think about or draft a series of questions to fill in those blanks. The question drafting can be visual, like the flowchart in the middle, or it can be more of an outline format if you prefer, prefer a more linear approach. Sometimes it's a little of both, and sometimes it's a bunch of nothing, and you just jump right into the authoring process in the software. Um, either one works, um, and I have done authoring in A to J Author plenty of times, so um, I've used both the flowchart and the outline and nothing, and I find that um, some sort of outline, some sort of list of variables is very helpful before I jump in um, to the actual authoring process. So the great thing though about our community of developers and the fact that A to J Author has been around since 2005 is that there are literally thousands of examples for you to look at when you're beginning your authoring process. You don't have to start from scratch, even if you're automating a form that's never been automated before. Um, if you are using Law Help Interactive, for example, to host your A to J guided interviews, their developer portal allows you to download the interview files from about a thousand guided interviews and reuse them in your interviews using the merge tool, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, if you're using a to j.org, we have access to the interview files. And so if there's an interview that you want to duplicate or build upon, we can pull it and load it into your authoring account for you. And the A to J author document assembly community is very open to sharing and emphasizes building upon the work of those that have come before us. So let's talk about how to do that sharing. The merge tool was released at the end of June last year, 2022, with the idea that developers can use it to reduce the number of questions that they actually have to draft, to reuse components of interviews like logic, pages, variables, whole steps, where they wouldn't necessarily want the whole interview wholesale, but they want to pick and choose the parts of it that they want. And they want to recycle the work that's already been done into their own interviews to make new ones. And so the merge tool allows you to select parts of an interview and merge them into another interview, basically doing that work of copy and paste for you. So I'm going to show you a live demo. This is a screenshot of the merge tool, but I'll walk you through just a quick example of how the merge tool works. So I am in my authoring account on a to j author.org. Um, here is where you would create a blank interview if you want. Here's your list of all your interviews. Um, and here is the merge interview component. So if I know I want to use the merge tool, I have to specifically go to this section. I click on it and it's going to load. Um, so I was doing one before. So let me exit without saving this one. OK, so here's what you'll see. And you can either this is the new interview that you're going to create or this is what you're merging into. So I'm going to assume that I have uh, no interview that I am uh, starting with. I want to start with a blank interview, but you are also able to merge things into interviews that already exist. So what this is showing is just a list of all of the interviews um, in my file of interviews, basically in my account. But I'm going to start with a blank interview. I double click on it to select it. Now you can see that it's called merged interview and today's date. So um, it's merging into a clone of what was my interview. Now it's going to be called merged interview. So I'm going to do rename it webinar merged interview. And you can see that it has 23 variables. It has the default 
four questions that come with every interview, every blank interview, and all of the default variables. So this is what is in every blank interview. There are um, the different steps, the four pages um, with the intro, the name, the avatar, and then that text of my first question goes here. And so uh, this is what already exists. And I know I want to pull from some sample interviews. So say, for example, I want to go to sample interviews, drops me to the bottom with this list of currently four sample interviews uh, that we as A to J author have curated um, as good examples of interviews. But you can also upload any interview, like you're pulling one from Law Health Interactive or a to j.org, and it would be in this list of interviews above the sample. Anyway, so I want to pull, I know that adult name change, name change has some really good introductory screens. So I'm going to select adult name change as the interview that I want to pull from. You'll see adult name change has 159 variables. On the left is my still uh, new interview that I'm merging into. And on the right is all of the components of the interview that I want to steal from, that I want to take from. So I see there's 159 variables. That list is a little long for me. I, only want the variables that are related to the questions that I want. So I'm going to collapse the interview variables and I'm going to open up the initial step because I know that that's where they have the disclaimer that I really like and the Spanish instructions and uh, the program instructions and then how to find help. So you can see now that I have selected from step zero five of the nine pages. Overall, I have one out of the six steps with content selected from. And you'll see that at the top here, interview variables used to say zero out of 59 selected. But for some reason, these questions have two variables that I'm going to need. If I'm going to pull these questions, A to J is going to pull everything that's needed for those questions to work exactly like they do in this interview into my new one. So it's going to pull in two new variables. And then they have a ton of great pop-ups so that I want to reuse some of their pop-ups. So I'm going to include ceiling and maybe the fee waiver explanation. So now I'm pulling four out of their 194 pop-ups. Some of these sample interviews have really great pop-up explanations or Spanish translations. Um, a lot of that's built in, for example, this is a, a New York DIY adult name change interview, um, and it has really great translations in it. So, I'm going to pull this all in. I have these different components selected that I want to pull into my webinar merged interview. And I'm going to collect, I'm going to click safe merge selected because heaven forbid I have something in my, my interview I'm merging into that's a conflict. I don't want this new stuff to override, overwrite my old stuff. So if you do merge, anything that uh, conflicts in terms of names is going to overwrite what was in my original interview. You do safe merge. Um, it's just going to change the name of the new stuff to something like ZZZ. Um, it's going to be prepended to the to the front of it um, just to make sure there's no conflict. So safe merge is always the best bet. I'm going to safe merge. It's doing the work there. Now you can see that it, I used to have 23 variables, but now I have 25 variables because it pulled in those two print Spanish and print lawyer info TF into my interview. It added the additional disclaimer pages. So step there already was a step four in my interview, but now it added step four merged. So it prepended that ZZZ and called it merged. So it safely adds it to a step. I can always move it around later. And it added all of the content that I had asked it to, the different four different pop-ups and the four different pages that I had selected. And then I finish and save my interview. And now this new one called Webinar Emerged Interview is going to pop up in the list of interviews. A to J automatically scrolls to the end, and I can open it and work on it. Um, and you can see that it has my pop-up, it has my merge step, it has everything I need now to build on top of this interview um, and quickly get authorized. All right, that's the merge tool. So you've done the work now of authoring your interview, but you're not quite done yet. Here's where you need potentially to send your interview to your subject matter expert to review. So you've put, you've taken the text, maybe you're um, not the subject matter ex expert on divorce um, in your legal aid organization or your court, you've worked with another lawyer um, or a court expert to help you figure out what questions need to be asked and all those sort of heuristics, the rules of thumb, the definitions, you've gotten all that with a subject matter expert. 
but you've put it into the software because you're the tech, tech expert here. Um, and now that subject matter expert needs to look at it again to make sure it flows like they intended. Maybe there's some plain language changes that need to happen. They're not really familiar with A to J author. How do you just show them the text of the interview? Or maybe you've done all the work, you've polished off the English version of the interview, and now you want to translate it into another language. How do you just get the text of what needs to be translated? Not all of the logic or the variables, because that's going to stay in English, no matter um, what language the interview is displayed to the end user. And this is where reports really shine. So all of the reports are found under the reports tab of your interview. So uh, if you're not familiar with A to J author, all of our authoring is sort of done via tab. Each one of these tabs has different content in it that you'll work with at different times of your authoring process. The report tab is one of those. There are three options under the report tab. There's a full report, a text report, and a citation report. So what's contained in each one of those? The full report, the TLDR that you long don't read, is that everything is contained in uh, the full report. It has your interview metadata, the steps, the variables, every page, every citation, every learn more, pop-up field, label, list, uploaded content, logic, buttons, where each button goes to, the destination, the next question, the readability score for the whole page or for the individual pages and for the whole interview. So um, you are able to print um, or to download the PDF of your full report um, if you go, let me go back to my screenshot, here's print preview. If you click that, it will print preview whichever one of the reports you're currently selected. Um, by default, the report tab opens up the full report, but you can change the report you want. And then click print preview, and it will open up the preview in your browser, and you're able to then download it or share it however you need to. Um, the text, so the full report would be great for sending to your subject matter expert. So maybe they're too busy to learn how to, how to go through A to J and they wanna make sure that they hit all of the paths because they can, your testers can test it um, via our hosting site on a to j.org if you wanna just throw it up there and quickly test how it flows for an end user. But that doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna hit every path because assuming your logic has branches, um, it's kinda of hard to work through all of the branches and make sure you hit everything with a single or even multiple passes um, through the actual interview. So the full report lets you see everything that's in the interview to make sure that every single page of content and all of the steps and all that kind of stuff is um, as you expect it in one place. The text report is just the text, as it says. Um, this is where it's great for translation. So you don't need to translate the logic or um, the steps uh, the buttons where like where the um, buttons are leading to their destination. All you need translated is the page text, the learn more, the pop ups, the field labels, the button labels, um, and all of that is in a text report. So it really limits um, what content has to go to a translator, particularly if you have to pay like per page um, for translations or per word. This uh, just boils it down to what text is in the interview, not all of the other stuff around the interview. And then the citation report is for the you in a year from now. If it is you or future, whoever does your job in the future, um, you've automated the form, you've put it up, it's been run by people for a year, um, but now you have to make sure, we recommend every six months to a year to check to make sure that your form is still good law and that you're actually still giving good content to end users. How do you do that? So throughout the interview, there are places for citations, and they don't have to be formal citations like, um, you know, this exact statute and um, this, uh, you know, a link to this specific court case. You can have stuff like I used 35,000 in the logic because that is our um, our guideline for this year based on, you know, X memo from our executive director. And then you can use that in the logic section, in the text section, and in the learn more. Each one of those different sections has a field that allows you um, to add a citation or notes to it. And then the citation report will pull that metadata out. So notes and any citation field and run it in a singular report. Um, and when you run that report in as the author, you can see all of those places that might need to be checked. So you as new authors should be adding in as much citation report data 
as possible anytime you use a specific number in logic. Like, why is it relevant if x and u is greater than 2? What, what about 2 is important? Or if income is uh, too high, if they say that their income is 35,000, why is 35,000 relevant? Where are you getting this number from? Because it's way harder to figure out in the future why somebody did something else than for you to just annotate um, as you're doing it. So add those citations, future you or whoever ends up having to fix your or um, update your interviews in the future will thank you. Okay. So last one for today is our A to J analytics. And this is where you're going to show off the work that you've done by automating a court form or a legal process. So I mentioned we have the tab-based system. Your analytics reports are found under the analytics tab within each one of your interviews. What's included? So these reports include the number of visitors per interview, whether your visitors are returning or new visitors what device type, what brand, what model, what configuration, what resolution their machines are using, what operating systems and browsers are being used. So you can see what percentage of the visits come from, say, Chrome or um, Chrome Mobile, from Firefox, from Samsung, etc. You can see exit page titles. So where did they leave the interview? Um, outlinks. Did they click anything that you put in there um, for them? To link out to where they leave so where did they come back into an interview the top paths for an interview whether people clicked your pop-ups whether they clicked your learn mores whether they did save and exit um, and also as sort of the region of where people are coming from to run your interview so ip addresses are anonymized to the last four digits of the ip address so we can get down to like the county level or um, the city, but it's not drilling down to like someone's specific address. Um, and so it can give you an idea of where people are running your interviews as well. Currently, however, the A to J analytics tab is getting an upgrade. So we're a little bit under maintenance right now. And it's um, the ability for you to access the analytics tab is uh, in flux. And so there might be some times where you can't ac access your analytic data report immediately um, or it, will, it won't look like I just showed you in those screenshots because we are upgrading our system to handle the increased number of customized reports that you all are, all are requesting. So um, if for some reason it doesn't look like I showed you or there's an issue with getting your specific data, let me know. Um, reach out to me and we'll get the data you need for grant reporting purposes or um, you're, you know, you're about to demonstrate to a judge how great your project is and you want to show the work you've done in the past. Whatever it is, we'll help you get that data out of our analytics tool. Thank you all for attending throughout the month. If questions do come up or you have any concerns or issues with A to J, feel free to reach out to me, jessica at cali.org, and we will get those solved for you. So thank you all for attending, and I will see you in April.